Welcome back to our Zonal Statistics tutorial. If you haven't seen the first part of this tutorial, please go check that out so you can get caught up. Um, and once you've watched that, we're going to continue on um, iterating through the features in our vector layer. So just a quick refresher, we have this vector layer that has two polygons that overlays on this raster layer, and we are going to find the statistics of the raster layer inside of those polygons. We've loaded our polygons, we've loaded our raster layer, and we have an empty list to store our statistics. And we're doing this in QGIS. Okay, now what we want to do is start looping through the features. And we can do it this way. So we can have a feature. Um, we're not going to name it feet. We're going to name it uh, P feet. So it's going to be a polygon feature is going to equal layer dot get next feature. Okay, so this will get the next feature in the layer, and it will go through until all the features are completed, and that's going to be our P feature. Okay, and we're going to give an, uh, call it N iter, so the number of iterations. We're going to start out with a zero, and that's going to update each time. Okay, and so while, we're going to do while feet, which means as long as we have a feature, we're going to have this while loop going on, okay? And inside of this, we need to get the geometry reference of the feature, okay? So let's go, if the feature geometry reference, we're gonna get the geometry reference, and we'll talk a little more about this geometry uh, or oh, sorry, not feet. This is going to be my apologies. This is p feet. And so do if p feet dot get geometry ref is not none. So basically, we need to make sure this has a geometry reference. And the geometry reference contains information about the geometry of the polygon. It will contain the points that um, tell you the extent of the polygon, which you'll need to figure out where it overlaps with the raster. All right? And so if that exists, then we can start doing some other things, okay? And so what we want to do is we want to create a temporary data set. Um, so we'll call this our TPDS, Temporary Polygon Data Set. And we need to create an OGR data source in memory um, that we're going to use kind of an intermediate data source to work with this. Okay, now creating this data source is going to be a little, just a little bit involved, not too hard. We need to get a driver to create a data source. And so I'm going to come up here, um, kind of at the top, and I'm going to make an OGR driver. Actually, I'm going to call it an SHP driver for a shapefile driver. So this driver will allow us to create shape files. Okay, and I'm going to do OGR dot get driver by name. There's going to be a different driver for each file format. And we want to do Esri shapefile because that's the format that our um, polygon shapefile is in. Okay, so we have that created. Now, I need to come down and I am going to create the data source. So our TPDS, Temporary Polygon Data Source, we're going to do DS, or sorry, not DS, we're going to do um, SHP driver dot create data source. Okay. And then we need to give it uh, a file location to do that. And I apologize. I just made a little bit of an error here. It's not too big. Um, we don't want to create a shape file. We want to create this um, file in memory. So we don't actually write a new file every time. So I'm going to make this a mem driver. And we're going to change this from Esri shapefile and we are going to change it to memory, capital M, memory. Okay, so there we go. Now we have that, so we have a memory driver. Let's come down and change this to mem driver. 
Okay. And now let's make give this a name, which we will call. Uh, actually, I'm going to call this. Uh, we're going to make this a variable. So we'll call it shp name uh, equals. We'll call it temp. Okay. So we've got temp, and so we're going to create data source, and we're going to call it temp. All right. Now, we're looping through this, and so that file is going to exist already in some cases, and we don't want to have it throw an error. So what we need to do is we need to check to make sure the file doesn't exist before we override it and create a new one. So to do that, we're going to check for the path, and we're going to import OS for this. We're going to do import OS. We're going to come back down here, and we are going to do if os.path.exists and we're going to input our variable here which is our shp name okay then what we want to do is we want to do mem driver and we're just going to delete data source and we are going to give it once again shp name Okay, and here we're going to create data source, shp name. All right, and so that will create a new empty OGR data source that we're going to use as kind of a temporary go-between uh, as we do this. Okay, and so we need to create a layer for this data source now. We can't have features if we don't have a layer. So we're going to call it uh, our tplyr, and it's going to equal rtpds.create layer uh, we're going to give it we're going to give it the name of polygons we're going to give it none and then we're going to give it OGR WKB polygon okay so what we're setting up here is we're setting up the name of the layer um, this is the layer type and then our none, I believe, here is our uh, geometry that we're going to give it right away. Or, our, sorry, our, our uh, projection. So we're not going to worry about the projection because it's not going to matter for this particular layer. Okay? So we have the layer. Now we need to create a feature for that layer. Okay? So we're going to call this uh, TP feet. Or, sorry, we don't need to do this. We just need to do TP LYR. We're going to create feature, and this will add a feature to the layer. We want to call p feet dot clone, and that will just create a copy of this feature we already have. Okay, so you may be wondering why did we create this temporary layer that has a feature that's just a copy of this feature we already have? And the answer to that is we're going to use this feature in this layer, so we're going to use this data source. Um, we're going to rasterize this data source. We're going to convert it to a raster that is concurrent, or I guess not concurrent, but it's going to be it's going to be concurrent with the uh, with the raster we're getting our data from. And we need when we in order to polygonize, in order to sorry, in order to rasterize, we need to import. We need to input a data source. We only want to we only want to rasterize one feature at a time in order to get those zonal statistics for one feature at a time. So if I was to just input the entire, um, my entire polygon data source, it would be very hard to go through and then get the corresponding raster data that went to each feature. But if I do this and make a data source for each feature, then it becomes much easier to get the specific uh, statistics and the specific raster data for that feature. So I know it took us a little time to get this set up. Um, we haven't done a whole lot here. All we've done is set up a temporary layer in a temporary data source we're going to use uh, later to rasterize so that we can then um, correspond the raster pixels to the polygon extent. So once again, we're at 10 minutes here. I'm trying to keep these short kind of bite-sized pieces um, and we'll come back in the next video and we will start figuring out the dimensions and the size of the raster that's going to represent this polygon uh, feature. So that's what we'll do next time. Stay tuned, and thanks for watching.